Uh, so I decided to get another skull compressor and cut it open so we could see a little bit more about what happens. So here we can see we have the shell cut off. This is our shell. It's a very thick metal. It's a lot thicker than the reciprocatings. Even though from this section down is all low pressure, it's a pretty thick casing. I think that maybe because it's for today or because the shell itself is what's holding the compressor. Here we have our stator where all of our windings are. This is our moving electromagnetic field. And then inside we have the rotor that rotates around. Here we have our suction pipe that comes into the housing and I have it pulled back. What's cool is we have this little plate right here. As the suction gas comes in, if there is any liquid refrigerant, it's going to hit this plate and it allows it to drop to the bottom. So ideally it's going to be dropping down here to the bottom. Now we still do not want liquid in our compressor. That liquid refrigerant hitting these windings can cause damage to the varnish that's on this winding and cause damage to those windings. Also that liquid refrigerant gets down and washes the oil away from the bearings. So we still don't want liquid refrigerant, but at least it keeps the majority of that liquid refrigerant from coming straight into the pump action. So I thought that was interesting. This part of the compressor doesn't move at all. We have these little grooves inside of here, these little notches, and these little notches press in right here and here that keep that from moving. If we take the very top shell apart, here we can see what's happening. This is the very top, this is the discharge side. So all of this top section here, all of this is red, high pressure. High temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. So all this is hot gas. If you're to touch the top of the compressor, it's gonna be very hot because that's your discharge temperature. So the rest of this down here, all over this section, is low temperature suction. When it discharges into this, we go in, allows the gas to expand and then come back out. So all of the pulsation happening of every time it pushes gas into this chamber, it causes it to smooth out. Here, up inside of this connection here, we have a check valve and that check valve prevents the refrigerant from flowing back this direction. Maybe you have low pressure on this side, high pressure on this side. So once the compressor shuts off, in the old days, the high pressure would push back into the scroll set, causing it to make a really funny noise, and customers always complained about it. And we said, well, there's nothing we can do. The new compressors, they put the little check valve here so refrigerant can't flow backwards, which is really a nice benefit, nice little addition. So here we take a closer look at what that shell looks like. It's just two different chambers. We take this top piece off. We can see this component right here. This component is our pressure relief valve. It separates the high side back to the suction side. So when the differential between the high side and the low side gets to be too great, it's going to dump the high side, open this valve, and dump it back into the suction side. So the compressor will, in other words, free spin. It's still not going to be great for the compressor because we're dumping a hot gas back in. And in here in the windings, we're going to have an internal thermal overload. It's going to get hot and trip out. And it's still going to cause issues with the compressor. But it's going to prevent it from breaking the parts of the compressor pump action itself. That's going to be important for us to note. So here's we turn this compressor. As we rotate it, you can see the rotor action happening. This part stays stationary as well as the top part stays stationary. But what is happening is the hula hoop or the offset, the scroll action is taking place. You can see a little bit of that slide motion taking place inside of here. Still. Now I've cut this apart, so you got to think when you're looking at this piece, it, this would really be the back side. It's all covered up. It's all center, all covered except for this very hole in the center, which is going to be right here. So let's take a look at how that scroll action is happening. So here you can see, I'm going to move it backwards, but this is our scroll action. And this piece here in the middle is moving around because I taped it because I didn't want to start the welder up. I'm lazy. So this is what's happening as it's moving around. So let's follow this path to see what's happening. So here, when it's opened up, this gap is opened up. It's pulling in refrigerant right here, low temperature, low pressure refrigerant, all in this chamber. So all of this long quantity is where it's coming in. Then as we scroll around and this starts to close up, over here our gap is now getting a slightly little bit smaller. It's sealed in. And as we continue to rotate around, that gap is even smaller. It's closer together, raising the pressure, reducing the volume. And as we continue to come around yet again, that, pre that volume is even smaller. And then finally we're going to get all the way to the very center and it's going to be coming out the very center here. 
But what's cool about that is we got to think it's not just, it takes three rotations to make that happen. We've also started another one over here in the center and another one's already halfway through. So we're just constantly pulling in refrigerant. And if we see, let's see if we're pulling refrigerant from this side as well. If we're pulling in refrigerant here all the way around, as well as we're pulling in refrigerant here on the outside all the way around. So it's extremely efficient as far as how the system's working. It's sucking in low pressure vapor, pumping out high pressure vapor, and that refrigerant on both sides, it's squeezing it tighter and tighter and tighter to the very center. It's a very small chamber of volume size, and that's what comes out the very hole right here in the very top. Let's zoom in and take a little closer look at what's happening. So if you look, right in this section right here, as I start to rotate this, you can see how it just picks up a little bit of refrigerant, squeezes it, opens, picks up a little bit more refrigerant, around and around again. And it's sliding on these little grooves right here, these little tracks. So it just keeps that action happening around and around and around again. So I ground the bolts off because I didn't have the tool to take that loose. But once we pull this top off, you can see the scroll action happen. So this piece is stationary, and this is the piece that moves. So I'll set this down, and let's take a look at what's happening. I'm going to hold this firm. And that's all it does. It just moves back and forth on those nice little tracks right there. and the two scrolls just move against each other. If we take the whole entire head off, this is our whole pump action. You can see here there's a piece that's offset and this is offset as well. And this is our scroll set. Just like before, we have our plug that connects the motor to the back side of the casing, and we have our rotor. This is what rotates. But it's got these little grooves in here with these drill holes. I'm pretty sure that's for oil oil circulation, and this motor looked like it was in actually pretty good shape. The windings look like they're in pretty good shape. I think most of the black is from where I cut it open. This is our internal thermal overload. But the scroll itself, all the scroll pieces look like they're in good shape. I don't see any major damage. I don't see any copper plating. Um, don't know why this compressor was replaced or taken out of circuit. Uh, we found it, able to take it apart and see the basics of how it works.